So who's the current fucko? Me? Am I still you fucko? Yeah, you're fucko. God mm -hmm. damn it. I hate being the fucko. There you go. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. This is episode 121 for Thursday, the 30th of March, 2017. We are here with Amos, as usual, and with okay. us is the one, the only, Captain Fubar. What's up, Rob? Oh! Hey, guys. I'm glad to be on the show. Um, I, I just got to thank you. You're the first ever show to ever ask me to be a guest. Oh. My ego, my ego and flight, you know, a great wait, deal. Wait, 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 wait. We asked him? I thought he wrote us a check. Well, uh, oh, uh, uh, Hey, you're killing well, you the ask, and the, the check bit. is part of I mean, it's on its way. Don't, uh, please okay. don't miss this opportunity. I just want to make sure that I was up to speed on what was going on. <laughs> hey, um, today is the 30th of March. Is that like double Ides? Um, double I hope Ides. not. God, I hope not. <laughs> Man, does that mean like we all have to like die twice horribly? I don't know. Crap. Apparently, uh, chat is behind. So, uh, uh, well, that, 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 that's the thing that happens. Wow. Um, Two minutes behind. That's uh. That's not that's, as bad as being thirty minutes behind. I mean, that's oh, right. Yeah. I was gonna say, Chad is only twenty. Is still twenty eight minutes ahead of Kent. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a. Uh, I just realized that's a that's an OBS problem, and I'm not gonna fix it. So, chat a lot, and uh, <laughs> it'll catch up quicker. <laughs> chat often, chat hard. All right. Um, hey fellas, how was your week this week? <sighs> Dude, oh my god, <laughs> work, work work i know i used to say this all the time this week has been especially awful i'm supposed to get off work at five o'clock i didn't get home until almost seven o'clock tonight and mm. jesus on a night that not only is it a ritual misery night but it's a night that i'm producing and i was only half ass set up with obs and my my sounds and my stuff and uh yeah yeah, yeah. Well, see, here's the thing about setting up OBS and doing a podcast or anything else. You don't care about practice runs until you forgot to do yours. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So accurate. So all the, all these weeks, uh, like when I was going through all those troubles, I had to bother Kent like every weekend. Like, dude, I need a practice run, man. I need blah blah blah. And it was always like, oh, like Amos, why do you why, why do you need all these practice runs? <laughs> and then here it is, Kent's producing for the first time in a while, and he's like, oh. Fuck! I didn't practice like a bunch of. <laughs> that was me last night. Last night I had a stream uh, out of the blue. Played some FTL on Diamond Club. Uh, uh, Max Trollbot was there. A few others, um, and my audio was just fucked for about forty minutes. And uh, if that would happen here, then we would have been uh, 30, 38 minutes late. Instead of, <laughs> um, and honestly, I, I woke up and I thought that we were going to be recording at like two p.m. Or something like that. I don't know why. It just got in my head that we might record early. Oh. Um, and I got up about 4 p.m., 5 p.m., and I was just freaking out because I was the one who was supposed to be on the show, and I was late. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was scrambling, trying to make everything. I'll get everything I need to get, research some things. Where are you guys? And then I got a text uh, from Kent saying, hey, just about to come home. I'll start soon. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I checked. Oh, I checked around. the email and I got this like, like, oh fuck, guys, sorry, I'm, I'm, I just woke up, I'm late. I'm like, dude, we're not like going on for a few hours. Like, yep. <laughs> the great thing is, Kevin Fubar at two o'clock, he was actually logged in the chat room, ready to be just to watch, <laughs> just to participate. You know, hey, I'll be, I'll, I'll get to watch live, yay. <laughs> two hours. Yeah, so. Why the fuck aren't they live yet? <laughs> oh, dude, hey, I, did, I was just glad I didn't get it wrong. I did get to do something fun this week. Uh -oh. Th this week was what Poodle was Punchers that? Poodle Punchers Diamond Club movie night. That oh, was this yes. past Saturday, and oh my god, it was so much fun. So to celebrate March Madness, or uh, <laughs> not celebrate, I don't know, to distract from whatever you want to call it, uh, we did a madness themed movie night, and we watched Reefer Madness followed by Sex Madness. Oh goodness! And wow, what followed by fun. more fifties and fifties uh, and sixties society films. We'll call them society films. I think that's appropriate. I'm so uh, mad I missed that. <laughs> it was a and good time. Was, I, I missed the first half of it. I missed the the main feature, but I caught I caught in right at the end of Sex Madness. And 
Holy crap, man! That that was just that was an hour and a half of really really good fun. Like if you're not Shut part up, of it, woman, give me more reefers. Is that part of the movie? Um, uh, not word for word. That's science that's the, if you're there. Yeah, that's kind of the theme. <laughs> it was insane, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, you guys should participate next time. I'm talking to all of you, chat room. Um, I wish I had the uh, wish I had the the. Twitter. Somebody throw into the chat what the uh, Twitter handle is for movie night so you can keep track. Uh, Poodle does it once a month, and he usually runs a poll on what the movie should be so everyone can... Uh, I believe it's everybody. at DC Movie Party. Yes, that that sounds that sounds correct. Yeah, at uh, uh, DC M-O-V-I-E-P-A-R-T-Y. Yeah, I really wanted to join, but um, someone called me in for work and I had to close and ship, and I just, mm. I, I, was, I was planning on it. I bought the popcorn. I didn't buy popcorn. But I bought popcorn <laughs> in my head. I was ready, and I had to be called in. Oh, man. Did you do anything fun, though? Did you did you find some time this week to, to do something you enjoy? Um, Honestly, not really. This week's been a lot of just uh, push and pull. Like I did a lot of working. I'm uh, finishing photo edits for my friend's wedding uh, about a month ago. And so I figured I should probably get like all the edits out to her. Um. <laughs> Then I uh, watched a lot of YouTube. Did a little work. Did some more editing. Uh, I watched a Dungeons and Dragons show, which I'm missing tonight. I'm gonna watch the rebroadcast tonight later. Um, did some editing. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> so it's been a lot of just work, work, work. But now I'm like free to do fun stuff, like stream. And my friend, um, the Spoons of Fire, who people in chat might know if you've been on at the same time. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more streams now because he's just finished his fall term. So look it up. We're looking up and up and up. And, uh, yeah. Um, so you, you speak of work and the only thing that happened to me at work this week, uh, both of you had like traumatic experiences. Ken actually had to work for a living this week and, <laughs> and, you know, uh, Rob, you had to, you had to do work that you didn't want to do because someone else didn't want to do it. This week has been all closing. All closing shifts. I, uh, I just, mm. my, my big thing about work was driving into work. We had a sudden nine inches of snow just come out of nowhere. Well, I mean, it came out of the sky, but oh, dude, uh, I, I hate when I, I get was, I, I hate when I get a surprise. No, just coming up from the ground. What the fuck? <laughs> I, I hate uh, when I get a surprise nine inches. Yeah, that's what she said. So on Tuesday, I was driving into work, and well, Monday, I don't know one of the one of the days earlier this week. A car careened in front of me and came to a rest right beside my lane. So I almost smashed a little Volkswagen Rabbit or something with my with my power wagon. Mm. The next day, two accidents happened almost right in front of me. Like within one or two cars ahead of me, an accident just occurred. Twice the second day. You're bad luck. How are how are well there's that's two that I saw out of like eight that I passed. I mean, there's accidents all over the place. Jeez. I don't know how people in Alaska don't know how to drive in Alaska. Oh, that's right. You're in Alaska. Yeah, that, well, that make, doesn't make sense. Yeah, that, that, that would make total sense if, if that happened. If I got a surprise. It's like Portlanders not knowing how to deal with rain. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been crazy. Um, however, uh, moving on to some geeky news this week. I revived my Flickr account. But I, that I had lost for, like forever ago. I finally got that figured out, um, and I started consolidating all of my Lightroom archives. Finally, getting it into one single collection of all of my photography work for the last—I say work—but it's a hobby for right. the last decade and a half. Uh, oh, taking- I need to do that. That's that's pretty sweet, man. Because I I know that you talk fairly often about you know being a. Uh, you know, hobbyist photographer and in a, a you know video file and all of, all of this sort of stuff, but we don't have a centralized place to see your work, and I would love yeah. to see something like that. Yeah, I've got um, that's actually so I finally recovered my Flickr account because a while ago I could try to get in, but it wouldn't let me. Like it kept kicking me out for whatever the hell reason, and uh, I finally recovered that and was like, well, I want to put some pictures up. But wait, I've got like eight Lightroom archives of pictures. Like, am I going to sort all through all those individually? Or, because Lightroom won't let you open more than one archive at a time. Mm. It'll let you or open right, them individual all- archives, right? 
yeah, it's only you know individual archives. You can do a lot of stuff within them, but you can import from other archives and shit like that. You just can only have one archive open at a time. And I was like, why not just combine all of them into one and just go from there? And that way, I've got a single place with all my pictures, and then I can have it on a special drive. So I've got a USB three drive sitting here, and I'm just gonna have it because Lightroom wants you to archive once a week, and we're just gonna have that archived up to my uh, my server here at the house. So I've got you know dual backup right there, and because the, I'm using the hard drive, the portable hard drive, I can actually use it for my Windows machine, the Beast, and I can use it for my MacBook Pro. Hmm. Money. So mm. that was my uh, my I, 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 a photography geek. See, that's that's one thing that being a Mac user is different for. Like all mine, I, 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 everything I do photography has all been self stored and self processed, and I use Lightroom kind of like just to look at them, and mm. it's. I'm not as invested as some photographers are in Mac. Like, on Mac, it's all bundled, and it's like if you, like, if you lose an archive, you're fucked. But like, like mine, if I lose an archive and I just I have the original files and maybe lost some edits, but the original content's still there. But mm -hmm. man, that sounds like a whole bunch more work than I was thinking of. Mine, I just move files around my computer. <laughs> yeah, this and and that's how I end up with uh, with eight separate archives. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I had a MacBook for a while, and it was just too confusing. I was trying to get to the actual file. Like, no, you have to go through an app. I don't want to. Where's uh, the file? <laughs> yeah, there's a way, but it is a. It's like a labyrinth, trying to get through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get to photos. Well, like, imported photos those, on Mac OS is a. Mm. You know, one of the things that it does is that uh, it. Uh, we have visitors. Ah. Oh. Well, hi there. Oh, my goodness. Hey. Hi, Autumn. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> oh, you're oh, talking to them. Awesome. You're talking to us. Right. <laughs> Say awesome. hi. We both waved. So, they and, didn't do shit. So, Rob, Nothing. what what was probably the geekiest thing you did this week? Um... Actually, my my coworker gave me a set of dice. My 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 group and I are, uh, at work are trying to get a Dungeons and Dragons group off the ground, and um, I mentioned I didn't have any dice, so she gave me a, a, my my first set in a in a Tardis blue like uh, cone. I got my first set of dice, and I was just very curious about like, are these good dice? Or like, will they be fair dice? If I'm gonna be a DM, it can't be you know rolling low well every time. <laughs> and so I sat here and rolled out about 400 times each and marked it on an Excel document. And um, I, got a good, I, got a good, I got a good range. The only problem is my D20. Um, it doesn't hit the uh, 15, 16, and 14 that much. But uh, the highest number it did hit was one. So um, <laughs> my, my, uh, my, my group is going to have some interesting times ahead. And I, my characters will, too. But, uh, yeah, I, I sat here, like, rolling dice for a whole night watching YouTube just 400 times, putting numbers into Excel. Wow. Good God. Like, that is <laughs> super geek right there. That's something I, mean, I, I have would... the graphs I can show you. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Amos, that absolutely sounds like something you would do. Oh, yeah, I just wouldn't God. track it, and I would go on saying that it was the best set of dice ever, <laughs> only for it to ultimately fail every time I was in a critical area. Uh, yep, and I just want to make sure I can, buy, I can be like, guys... It, there really is the dice's fault. Yeah, that you're all rolling I, once. I have, jeez, I think I have ten sets of dice, and like I have, you know, I use certain ones for certain character classes. I get like a red set that's my magic set, and a green set that's my my ranger set, oh. and you know, and I, all that kind of stuff. I got, I've got uh, vampire set, and I've got, I just got all, all kinds of different sets, and uh, yeah, Ken's going to reach back behind him like Tom Merritt and pull his out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is a brown so, set, so if it really sucks, it's going to be my shit set. Because they're all a, a nice shit brown. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I love the color shit brown. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's a Crayola color. Yes, yes. yes. And tell, tell them about your 77 Granada that was seven shades of shit brown. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. What's so this? My very first car that I got... I bought it for myself for like three hundred dollars. No, I don't even think it was that. I think it was like two hundred dollars back in nineteen ninety three, probably. And dude, this I was three thing, years old then. Yeah, this thing was no kidding. Like seven shades of shit brown. 
it was <laughs> the ugliest car. But oh my god, that thing was a tank. You could yeah. Like there was this one time we were driving through this park and there was a downed tree, and uh, for reasons that we won't discuss, I didn't realize that it was there, and my car just like destroyed this log <laughs> no damage to the car push that shit out of the way <laughs> yeah. it was That's back when cars were ma- built to take strong hits yeah, yeah oh here we go oh my god brought a sack out yep amos is showing his sack hell yeah wait, <laughs> do. wait don't you have a, 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 buff, a thing for that i just heard <laughs> that's totally well, separate we'll get to that <laughs> oh okay <laughs> Sorry, I'm um, foreshadowing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I did hear some new things are coming out on uh, the comedy era scene. Yeah, man. So, have you ever watched a Louis C.K. stand-up show? I, I did. He's the one that like put all his money into uh, like doing a show. He paid for the production and then got all the money back for it, right? <laughs> Uh, you talk his, uh, his the sitcom uh, Louis or Lewis or Louis or I don't know I've never actually watched it but I yeah I think that's him I've never no, watched has, that anyway but yeah I, I think I, I know of him I know his style his stand up is uh, he is the greatest comedian on earth right now I I have all the confidence in saying that the man is just, I'm glad you said right now he's pure genius and he is hilarious. Uh, yeah, that's but that's yeah, good he, die if I go to hell. Right there. <laughs> I take him to hell. But Louis, at least, uh, Louis C.K. has a, a new special coming out on on Netflix in April. Yeah. And what day does it come I, out? Do you know? I, I'm not sure. Um, all I know is it's sometime in April, and I'm so excited. that uh, if only just A couple nights ago, we... Yeah, I know. If, we, if, if only we had a, a, a database that we could go to. Maybe through like uh, interconnected computers. Usually, I pull up a, 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 a an answer faster than this. Right. Uh, no, but it's. I'm looking so forward to it. Uh, Steph and I a couple nights ago watched watched one of his stand ups, and I just man, even though I've seen it probably five times at least, it's it's funny. Like it's fresh and funny every single time. It's just so good. <laughs> April fourth, by the way, two days before April fourth. Oh, beautiful. So two- beautiful. It's entitled uh, 2017. Oh. Well, oh, descriptive. That should be great. <laughs> I mean, hey, when did that special come out? Uh, his special 2017? Oh, yeah, shit. Oh, my God. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think he's the, uh, he's the same comedian who uh, like was sick of paying money to managers and, and people in between and all that. And so he rented it with, with his own money, rented a space. Uh, did promotion and um, hired a film crew, yep. and uh, then sold it. You know, as is, no DRM for five bucks online, and you can either pay for it or you don't. And he made he made his money back. Yeah, no, I yeah, I have no doubt. Like that that man that has got to be made of. Those that now. first stories covered uh, when I was started watching Frame Rate. Oh, okay. Holy crap! Yeah, yeah, that's that was a while ago. <laughs> Oh my god. god. So Am I that old now? Like <laughs> So Rob, Captain Fubar. Yes, Ken. So mm-hmm. tell us for, for those not familiar with, with you and your endeavors, tell tell us a little bit about who is Captain Fubar. What does Captain Fubar do on the internet? Um we'll not go into the second part. Um <laughs> but Captain Fubar is developing. I guess you can say. Um, I, I, I have a whole bunch of ideas. I want to do streaming. I want to do D&D. I want to do all this stuff. And I just need to uh, find a time to start doing all that. But I've been a very active in Diamond Club for... Uh, I, um, just before they went um, independent as Night Attack. Mm. And I know I, I, I stepped in, never really participating, you know, a few shows in the Twit sphere that, you know... Um, Buzz Out Loud, um, well, Twit, um, n- n- um, no, the, the, the show that can't be named, um, I watch that a lot, <laughs> right, um, right. and uh, so that, that's my first introduction, um, 
to the Diamond Club. And then I've been active ever since. And try not to make sure. Like, the only day I request, like, the only day I request off work every week is Tuesday. Just because it's Diamond Club night. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm just, I'm just trying to get some more time into, I get some structured form entertainment. Either be a podcast or a Let's Play walkthrough or, you know, a guest hosting like you guys have. Yeah, I I know I know whatever it is that you do, you'll be great because let let me let me tell people how I was introduced to Captain Fubar. So, um, of course, Uh I mean, Captain Fubar was known to chat realm. Uh, Barely a night attack goes by that there's not a Captain Fubar quote, you know, like Captain Fubar in the diamond chat says blah, blah, blah. Like, I mean, he's he's very vocal and he like he's. A, a popular chat roamer. So, you know, I was like, all right, cool, cool. That, that's awesome. Well, several months ago, when we were recruiting for our streamathon, our New Year's Eve streamathon, right? We asked people to sign up on our sign up sheet, and Captain Fubar was one of them that signed up. And when I was trying to put the schedule together, like, okay, where should we place this person and this person? Okay, this, you know, okay, she'll go there, he'll go over here. And I was like, where should we put Captain Fubar? Because he's the unknown. He's the variable, right? Like we I've not seen him stream anything. <laughs> I don't know I don't know what how he'll do. So And I, and that wasn't unfounded. Like he had emailed us and saying, Hey, I wanna do it. I'm down. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's not like we were just presuming do anything. Just know what he was do doing. It. He, uh, he literally said, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we, we actually, we put him, I think, what, third? Were you like third in the lineup, I think? I was after Bonnie. Yeah. Uh, okay. Third. So Bonnie, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because me and Amos opened it up and then Bonnie was second and then we had Rob go. And dude, I thought that I was just going to like, you know, switch to the next one and then just kind of probably go to bed at that point. Dude, I watched your entire stream. You were Shit. Entertaining. <laughs> you were entertaining from go. I was like, this guy. Oh my god! Why didn't we put him in a prime time slot? Like, holy shit! Uh, but yeah, super uh, entertaining, man. Uh, on retrospect, you did put me in a prime time slot, um, and oh, that's when yeah. we had the power surge that threw out a breaker. That's right. Yes. And so I thought that my computer was down, um, and I wasn't home at the time, and so everyone in the house thought the computer, like, the power was out because nothing else was on. And so I'm like, well, nope, no reason going home now. I'm just going to go to this party and get drunk. And yes. I did. Um, yes. <laughs> and I told totally, if I had known and just gone home, I would have had that uh, 9 p.m. Pacific time or 3 a.m. Pacific time. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think <laughs> Poodle Puncher. I think Poodle Puncher. I think this was one of the extra slots that Poodle picked up. Uh, one one of the heroes of the street. Yes, song. Yeah, it, so, yeah. Uh, we saved the um, the the movie show night because I gave him the extra slot. Yeah, that's right. Yep, yep. So pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And I missed that. Awesome. One, and I every now and then I catch you streaming on DC TV. Uh, you'll be doing a a, a like a Twitch uh, a game playthrough or something like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, I've so, done that a few times now. Yeah. I think. So hopefully, I'll be counting on both hands, but yeah, hopefully you can you can find some time to put put something together like on a, a more regular basis. I would I would absolutely and watch your stuff. Once I start getting a regular basis, that's when I'll start I'll start forming you know long bridging content. You know, like actually have a stop point, start point, time mm-hmm. you know chunk. Um, but that's going to take a little time. But you got all the time in the world to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> right. Uh, that's one we'll of the see. hardest parts. Come this man. summer, what happens? Yeah, that that is actually. I said it's one of the hardest parts. It's the hardest part is is finding the time to get something going because it, it it's very time consuming and especially if it's something that you want to keep doing like a, a weekly thing or God forbid a daily thing. It is it's so hard. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say, Amos? That's that's probably the hardest part about doing a streaming thing. Um, it, there's so many aspects to it. I would honestly say the hardest part is actually starting. Because once you start, once you get comfortable on the mic and in front of people with them knowing what you're doing, things like that, mm-hmm. it beca- it's, it's, it, I'm not going to say it's cake, but <laughs> everything else that it, comes after that, all the other problems and, 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 and uh, successes that come after that, start with that. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's the same as uh, music performance. Same thing. Like once you get into the swing of things, uh, it's easy to go up and sing that song you just learned a week ago. And yeah. you know, it's uh, and I uh, I make pizzas right now. At, um, a place called Mod Pizza. Um, oh, I have a boiled shirt on. I used to have the Mod Pizza shirt on. <laughs> but um, first first uh, month there, slow as hell. And I was you no know, not really good doing anything. Now you know, it's as easy as pie. <laughs> but, um, no, <laughs> um, I see what you did there. But no, so yeah, it's whatever you're doing, just start doing it. And it's gonna make it easier. I know that, but I just want to make sure that when I start doing it, this I have a skeleton at least so that it will start, it'll grow in the way I want it to. I don't want it just to you know go anywhere and not have any control by my content. You know what I mean? It's like I don't know what I'm doing. I want to know what I'm doing and then pretend I don't know what I'm doing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> Hey, um, speaking of people that know what they're doing, geekandgamergear.com. Dude, they I know what they're doing. I, I've heard of that site. Having cool shit to buy for no reason other than you just want it. Dude, things like uh, geek clothing, there's uh, there's beanies on there. There's uh, I think they even have neckties, dude. Like, but do they, like, have, a, do they have a Zelda dildo? Ooh, <laughs> they might. Uh, there's an Oak Arena. You can get like, an Ocarina in there. Uh, like an Ocarina $24 dildo? dollars like, for a Pokemon gym set? That's, I mean, that's not bad. But, but an Ocar- Ocarina would really be more of a butt plug, though. I'm, I'm well, just... I mean, you know, depending. Uh, no, they, but yeah, you're absolutely right. They've got really cool stuff. But you know what would be even cooler? No. As low as the prices are on this site, it'd be, they are super, l- it'd be super cool if there, was a, if there was a way to get the price even lower. Even lower? Even lower. Like like ten percent like ten percent lower. How ten percent? How, how would we be? I mean, is that even possible? Ten percent. You know, I'm I'm willing to say, just throw this on a limb. I heard a little birdie say that if you put a a discount code in there, maybe something like, ritual misery. Oh, dude, that'd be cool. Could that could that be a thing? Uh, you, you know, fuck it. If it's not, then try it anyway. Oh, I'm I'm not a smart man. How do you spell that? Uh, that'd be uh, R I T U A L M I S E R Y. Yep, no space. Ritual misery, all one word, and that's at Geek and Gamer Gear. Geek the letter N. Gamergear dot com. Who's on over there and buy some Skype? The letter N game. <laughs> gotcha. Ooh, different. <laughs> oh man, that's that's so great. Um. <laughs> but that's awesome. Uh, that actually looks like a really fun place. I want to go uh, check that out after we're done talking tonight. Pretty cool. Hey, Rob, you you've seen our show before, right? We we do a little game. <laughs> we do a little game where we want to get your hot takes. We want you to respond. Oh, we want you to respond to topics that we give you, kind of in a rapid fire fashion. So I'm going to give you a topic. You are going to respond to it by either just rambling for as long as you can about it, or just like you know, ranting, raving, praising, whatever it is you want to do. But as soon as you hear this sound, you're going to stop talking about that. I'm going to give you your next topic, and then you're going to go until. You hear that again. Are you ready? Oh, I was not ready for this. <laughs> You've got 60 oh, seconds. Okay. Get your mind right. It's time for Hot Takes on the Ritual Misery Podcast. Diamond Club, am I right? Oh, Diamond Club. You know, the, the two letters, Diamond and Club, it really makes it look like a, a polished gem of a, a jewel on the air and of contents, uh, which is like a C. It's a diamond content. It makes you good content for your ears lobes and spaces. Twitch, and, uh, Twitch chat, am I right? Twitch chat. Oh, fuck them. Am I, am I right? Okay. Oh, Twitch chat is the uh, cesspool of internet conversation. You, I mean, our, our Twitch chat is great. You know, Betty our, White, am I right? What? Betty White. Am I right? Oh, ain't she just the sweetest? I mean, she's like everyone's grandma. You can't be angry. She she hasn't done anything that no one would hate. She she know she's like the the grandma that you want to live across the street from you. You'll be happy to take her trash out. <laughs> the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, am I right? 
<laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, right. I've never been. <laughs> the Ritual Misery podcast. Am I right? Yeah. Honestly, the most fun I've had on Diamond Club in the last few days. <laughs> no, honestly, it's, it's a lot of fun. You guys are polished. It's nice and fun to be on here. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, thank you for playing Hot Takes. <laughs> That's always a fun segment. Okay. Uh, that, that game gets more and more complicated every single time. <laughs> it totally does. I can't really hear does. it that well at the end, so I can't tell if you're like laughing or if it's the, <laughs> the chat going off. Okay. Oh, man. It's so funny. Um, I just do a complicated link ever into the chat room because I'm lazy. God oh, damn. I think it got crap. cut off. Um, yeah, it just takes you to Google. <sighs> Oh, man. So, um, Rob, you put a couple things in here you wanted to talk about. Let, tell us about SourceFed. So, um, yeah, I didn't know how much time we had at the end, but I put a few things in there. And um, SourceFed was a, uh, a um, network, a studio developed by Philip DeFranco uh, through a grant from the YouTube uh like makers thing back and then they gave like they gave a few people a million dollars be a maker on youtube and they started source fed and the source fed soon became independent uh bought by um vision three which was then bought by discovery digital media which is then bought by some a-hole who is now selling them but they lasted for five years and it was one of the most i don't know surreal moments watching youtube like i've been watching these guys for five years i've been watching night attack for how long has that attack been on? Like in all its iterations, uh, I think eight years. Is it eight years? If yeah, so I'm probably there for about six years, maybe maybe seven. I'm not quite sure the, the dates on that. Um, and we're nowhere close to being dying. But you know, SourceFed has changed hosts. Like the original hosts are still doing great stuff. Uh, two of them are hosts on the um, lip sync battle behind the scene YouTube thing. So like they're up there. They're well known. And um, it's just weird to see like a whole community uh just you have one week and you're out and so it's the final white wall it's the final news report the the final tabletop comment commentary stuff like that and uh it's weird to see something you know so strong in the youtube community just disappear in one week and i just want to like bring up like how ephemeral you know current youtube makers are or content producers are Right. Frenchy, yeah. yeah, Philip DeFranco is my hero. I mean, they had, yeah, it was a great, um, it was great for the people who are like independent thinkers. Yeah, it, it was. And then it became did, something different. Did you ever? Um, did you ever? Have I just any... want to out in chat room real quick that uh, Joe Mine just hooked up with that picture that I was trying to link in like five times. Uh, <laughs> just... Oh yeah. Um, there we go, Betty White. Well, I, I'm sure uh, chat realm is just now hearing that part, so we're kind of... <laughs> <laughs> They'll catch it on the restream, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, Amos, do you, do you have any any um, experience with source source fed? This is one of those things that I think I just missed the boat on. Yeah, like yeah, I totally did. We talk about how much how there's so much content now. I was going to say it's there's, there's so much, much out there for years. You know. Yeah. Maybe uh, know about it. Yeah. This this makes me sad that I missed it. Sounds but like hey, fun. you know what lifted my spirits was the lifting of a rocket from SpaceX. So, um, oh my, this is so cool! Like I, 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 actually, I live streamed the original one on Diamond Club. Um, what a year, almost a year ago, six months, seven, four, shit. But oh, I don't, like March. Yeah, it's like a year and change now. I think. Yeah, um, it's been a while. But uh, yeah, they 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 launched a rocket. They landed the rocket back on Earth after delivering its payload. They packed it again, relaunched it, delivered the payload, and then landed it again. They, we now have reusable rockets. Yeah. Yeah. And and the, the whole payload went up without a hitch. And this is, this is amazing. This is like a, this, this is like is, another my inner geek just oh so cool. Yeah, this, this is another milestone in, into uh, Elon Musk's trip to Mars. That's what this is. That's that's the level of importance this is today. Mm-hmm. And this is, I love, Elon Musk is not a, a man of many words. He is a poor public speaker. He's really like looks anti-social. He just you know he looks like someone who just doesn't want to be seen that much. But yet he's making 
genius stuff and changing the world behind him. He's like, yep. I love that we have someone who's just normal geek and normal, you know, just science, science nerd, intelligent person yep. doing good. Yeah, you know, that's. Let's think of um, so. Steve Jobs is credited as being like this great innovator, like pushing consumer products beyond the point where people thought they should go and t or telling consumers, this is what you want, not waiting for consumers to tell them what they wanted. Uh, Elon Musk is kind of like humanity's Steve Jobs. He's kind of like, here, humanity, this is what you need. This is where, what's, where we're going to do. This is a next step in our evolution. This is what we're going to do with cars. This is what we're going to do with space. You know, this is what we're going to do with local transportation, with the hyperloops and shit like that. Oh, you need more energy? You need better energy? You need to be able to have energy all the time? Well, here's some fucking batteries in your walls. Yeah, yeah and There's if that a, doesn't work, like we won't charge you. Yeah. You know, you once you build it in, you're just good for, for like the next 30 years. You can, and by then, we'll have better batteries anyway, so screw it. Like, here you go. Here's the thing. Like, and by then, like, most people's roofs would need to be placing in that time, like twice. Yeah. Exactly. You, you got something that can support a family in. The dudes in Australia were like, hey, we need power out here to these blah, 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 blah. And he was like, well, I can have it up and running, you know, 20 kilowatts of power, standalone power up and running in 100 days or it's free. Yeah. I just love that. That's, that's oh. putting the money where your mouth is. Yeah. Like, I think Elon Musk is humanity Steve Jobs, whereas where Steve Jobs is all about the consumer product and things like that. And Elon Musk was really. Just about, hey, there's some cool shit people say can't be done. I'm going to make it happen. You know, the the thing is, he's, I think he is going to be, like, the guy that makes my dreams come true. Because when I was a kid, and even into, like, young adulthood, the, like, my greatest dream was to one day go into outer space. But, you know, I, I didn't take that astronaut career path. So the chances of that you, went. You didn't become a, an Eagle Scout. You didn't go through <laughs> right. physical, you know, training. You're, you had perfect eyesight. Exactly. That's the best. Yeah. Bond so blue one. so the, the possibility of, of just regular people being able to go into space, like we are getting closer and closer and closer to that. And, a, you know, a big part in thanks to Elon Musk and innovators like him. And it's just, it's, man, it's an exciting time that we live in. It's uh, oh, yep. man, mm. man, so good. Seconded. Yeah. So like the, future is, the future is rapidly approaching. Right. The so, future no, is here. People. One thing I noticed when I was watching the uh, the the, the um, SpaceX. That's the thing we were just talking about. SpaceX. Uh, I saw that it was number three on trending, and I usually never look at the, uh, the trending things. Um, but I went and I looked and I saw that the first thing that was trending was the new Game of Thrones trailer, and I hadn't seen it yet. Have you guys seen this yet? I I didn't know this. Seen this yet? <laughs> I didn't know this was here until I got home and, and saw that you had added it to the show notes. I threw the link in there, and I have not seen it yet. Yeah, like I, uh, I saw it. Can we show it on this? There's, I, I, I would. Uh, I'd watch it ten times over. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, because of my ob. Whoops, because of my my. Because uh, of OBS woes, naivete. Yeah, I. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't have it set up right now, and I don't want to waste anyone's time. So maybe in the post show, right. I can uh, I can pull it up for everyone. Uh, but yeah, the, the, when, when I can, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's a fun one. But look it up, and um, also also second no, yeah, second trending was the Destiny two trailer, and I don't give a shit about Destiny, but apparently if it's number two trending, a lot of people do. Yeah, I I my my Twitter feed is full of destiny 2 stuff and i've never played destiny and like yeah I, I personally i don't have a lot of interest in it but a lot of the people i follow do so i like played destiny i love first person shooters especially when you can go on your own and just adventure and do your thing and this is kind of like a, a first person shooter classic first person shooter game meets world of warcraft like it's an adventure game that you can build a character with and and get new talents and just yeah. going to ask if it was like that because it looks like that. It's questing it's, for loot. It's 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 a whole bunch of just like go here, get ten bear asses. It's know? fucking boring. In the use in the UI is, is suck. Like it's the worst UI of any game I've played on the PS4, bar none. Um, yeah, that's any, why I would never get into it. I a an experienced gamer have to think and try to interpret what I'm supposed to do next just in the interface crap yeah so maybe that'll be fixed so but. 
I want to I want to take a moment to um, we've got a segment that we very rarely but we we do occasionally uh, do here on the Ritual Misery podcast and it was originally called the Weekly Tithe and yeah. the idea was to take a moment to uh, thank and promote someone that has contributed to the success of Ritual Misery or to me or Amos personally. And uh, this week I want to do a tithe to Big Voice J, who has provided us some stingers. You heard earlier with the, the hot takes stinger that we've been using for the last, I don't know, what, two months now, I think, Amos? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, just, I, wanted to, I don't think we did this when, when he first sent, sent that to us. We had, I want to publicly thank him. Jay, like, man, your voice is the best, and you are just so freaking cool for making things for us and sending them to us. And I'm going to email you back because, uh, yeah, I'm going to send you something. Um, so yeah, big oh. shout out to him. He is on Twitter. Oh my God. I am so unprepared. I was going to call out his Twitter and have people <laughs> follow him and I have failed. So if anybody, if anybody knows Jay and want to, want to throw his Twitter out there for everybody, um, Jackie Hearn in chat agrees. He has a great voice. Yes. Yes. He should go into radio or podcasting or something like he, he's are you saying he has a voice for radio? Face for radio. <laughs> well, on. I've actually I've never or seen his up. face because he doesn't have, or at least he says he doesn't have a camera on his computer, so he only voice chats. So. Um, and by the way, he was part of the um, <laughs> AI. The, the AI guys. He vi- he very well might be. The, yeah. the movie part. Yes, his, he his usually. Party. Yes, he usually does hang out with us for the movie parties, and uh, so if you want to hear what he sounds like, then. Like you really got to check out the the DC movie party. Um, well, I have, do you have any clips of what it sounds like? Um, I do. In fact, I'm about to play another one, the most recent one that he sent us, because we have a new segment here on Ritual Misery, and uh, it's something like this. Challenge accepted. Oh, oh. Doing other things in these streets. Yo, that's crazy. This looks like a job for Amos's. Oh, on the Ritual Misery podcast. Amos, this is a bit that you came up with last week. And it I don't is. I don't know that any of us, including me, completely understand our role in this. So go ahead and lay it out for us. What are, what are we doing here? So we have all kinds of great guests on this show. Amazing guests. We do, Thank like you. Captain Fubar. Like, like Captain Fubar. I mean, you know, plus or minus, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're always striving to, to, to do something that, uh, that, that, uh, maybe people don't expect us to and okay. getting guests on that maybe people don't think we can. Okay. So the whole point of Amos's balls is if you reach out, if you, if you tweet us and, and, uh, and let us know this, that, that this is what you want, or if you email us ritual misery podcast at gmail.com. With the uh, subject line, balls, <coughs> let us know who you would like to have on the Ritual Misery podcast, regardless of who they are, how big they are, and I will make a concerted effort for that entire next week to get that guest to come on. Can, can people uh, put them in chat room? Can people chat at us right now who they want to see? Of course. Well, I mean, this week we don't have any, any tweets and we don't have any emails, so... Uh, this is your chance for the next, uh, the next. It, well, until the show ends, until until we declare a title. If you <laughs> if you come up with a, with somebody in there and it gets uh, some mass approval, then we then I will go on this next week and do everything I can to get them to come on the show. Okay. Cool. So that that is Amos's balls. Right on. So everybody, everybody, hit us up. Who do you who do you want to see on this show? Uh, we got some cool people lined up already, but I bet you, the viewer, have someone in mind that would be an amazing guest on this show. So hit us up. Uh, Rob, Even if it's someone who's already been on the show or has already flat out told us no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, please stop calling us. We we will. We actually have gotten guests by like basically assaulting their inbox and finally getting Gloria. 
<laughs> yes, Jackie heard in chat. Gloria Young. Let's get Gloria on the chat, guys. Oh, Glowbug. Amos Balls. Glowbug Young. Yeah, that would be that would be fun, actually. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, wow. So yeah. Hey, hey Rob. That's actually a great. Choice. Rob, hey. do you uh, do you ever get on the the Diamond Club uh, Twitch? gaming channel i can't think of the name of it do you ever get on online with no. some diamond clubbers and play games um not really because uh if i'm if i remember correctly we have a community for diamond club but i'm not part of that community uh, how do you join communities in twitch uh Derail that's, that's a right really now. that's a really Sorry. good question somebody it, somebody in, uh, i want to stream under the diamond club umbrella but I, i'm not and i don't know how to fix that that is someone one can tell me in chat i'll do it uh after the show we're gonna do a post show but uh, not yet, but uh, every so often I do. Oh, um, <laughs> I see what you want me to talk about. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, every Tuesday night after Nine Tech, we have the last couple of weeks we've had uh, a group of uh, uh, game nights on Diamond Club right after the show. Um, Bad Weave has been hosting uh, some Jackbox games, and they've been actually quite entertaining. We play everything but faking it, um, faking it. Because that one you have to be in, uh, in person. But, uh, yeah, everything else we play in person. And it's uh, uh, online. It's really fun. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, to say that I was actually there for one of the very first ones of these when the idea of, hey, we should do this every week and just make it a thing and announce it actually came up. And um, I had to cut out after, like, only six or eight games or something like that. But uh, always a fun time. And, man, if, if you think you know the community, you don't know until you've fucking <laughs> gone ahead. You don't know Jack. Yeah. yeah I, I watched Jack. quite a bit of, um, of this Tuesday's Jackbox. And I got in there for a little bit, but I, I kept having Internet issues. Twitch kept locking up on me. And I was finally like, you know what? Sorry, guys. Got to go. And, uh, yeah, it was funny because I, I spent, like, the next ten minutes saying bye to everyone that was DMing me. <laughs> on the, on um, uh, Discord, so <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah it's, a, you, it's a good if, time. If you want a chance to hear my dulcet sounds as I fall asleep at the keyboard with my mic on, uh, <laughs> Jackbox is usually the place that happens. Uh, game night is usually the time I accidentally fall asleep around one a.m. That's pretty good. So pretty good. Come come join us. Oh, that is that is amazing. That needs to get tweeted out. <laughs> so, uh, Rob, where should people find you on the internet if they if they like what they've heard tonight and want to see what you've got in store for them um, in the near future? I always direct people to my Twitter uh, at Rob Elmer Elmer or take two. Uh, I always uh, at Rob Elmer R O B E L M E R. Um, that's the, the the place that will have my most recent updates, what I'm doing, where I'm at. Unless Twitter goes down, that's the place where I'm going to communicate with people. Um, also, you can see me on twitch.tv forward slash Captain Fubar. Um, now that I know I can go into the community a whole lot easier, Joke Mon in chat just told me it's uh, under channel settings going to the community. So, easy as pie. Uh, I'm going to be streaming a lot more after I get a date set, get a time set. And uh, whatever I'm doing, uh, whatever program I'm, I'm using, it'll always be live again on DiamondClub.tv. Maybe at a little bit more of a delay. So, less of a delay. So, yeah, Very that's cool. what I've been doing. Could be doing. Very cool. Everybody check out Captain Fubar. Amos, what about you? Where are you at? Man, I got a question real quick, man. Yes. What is this? That is a die. It, 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 that it, is a 20-sided die. What's it called? Uh, 20-sided die? A what? A 20-sided die? You are incorrect, good sir. Uh, your camera's a little off. I can't see what we've got here. Oh, it's a 12-sided die. That's a 20-sided. That's yeah. a 12-sided. Uh, again, you were wrong, good sir. This is not... <laughs> this is the highest number on the die. Yeah, like I said, 12-sided die. Okay, no, magic. this is a D useless because nothing in the fucking game requires this. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Just so we're clear. <laughs> it's good for spinning, yeah, like the, when you're just bored, when you're DMing and your characters aren't doing anything, you just spin the die. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> that's the easy one. If you can get the four sided die to spin, you're doing pretty good, which I've actually done. I've, I've done it once. Or how to, Took me to take to do that. Figure out how to roll a uh, uh, three to d four. 
<laughs> you can you can find me uh, at at Ethan Kane E T H A N C A I N E. You can find the show at Ritual Misery R I T U A L M I S E R Y. Uh, you can email yep. us Ritual Misery Podcast at gmail dot com. Yep. And by all means, fucking give us a review. We haven't gotten any reviews on iTunes in forever. Give us a five star shitty review. Go in there with your most ridiculous story about how this podcast changed your life. And, and you ended up in a damn gutter, and you're on some free Wi-Fi on your on your Galaxy uh, uh, S Note Seven, or Galaxy, no- S Galaxy or Note whatever. Seven. Seven, Galaxy Note yeah, Seven, whatever. That catches on fire. Yeah, it's catching fire. It's actually catching fire while you're writing the review. And go in there and write the review. Uh, give us five stars, and uh, the w- the worst story you can come up with. Um, we'll read those next week if we can get any. And uh, Kent, back to you, man. How, what 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 else we got going on to this? What, who we got next week? What's going on next? Week? What is next week, dude? What's happening, dude? Next week, it's a birthday. Somebody's having a birthday, and it ain't what? me. Yeah. So you're you're having a birthday next week. We are going to have the show oh, that was confirmed, right? So we're gonna do the show, and uh, we're gonna have a guest, and um, I'm not ready to announce it yet. So, so I told you to surprise me, and you're like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna keep it completely hidden <laughs> until showtime." Uh, yeah, I uh, think uh, I'll tell chat room before I tell you. Oh, I'll, I'll make oh, sure well, that. Oh, actually, you've got a, that always on connection, right? I'll just DM yeah. everyone in chat room. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna say, "Can anyone be on?" Yeah, right, yeah. yeah like, hey, Rob, Rob, what are you doing next week? Um, hey, what are you doing next week? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, definitely uh, tune in and see what we what we have stored for Amos's fortieth birthday. <clears throat> Why are you gonna get out like that? <laughs> I don't look a day wow. over. <laughs> right. Yeah, the day over forty five. Yeah, <laughs> damn. Uh, but yeah, so you guys can follow me on Twitter <laughs> at rm underscore del noche. Check out what I'm doing there. If you're ooh, a beer ooh, guy. Ooh. What? Cr- Crunchy said you could DM the Patreons, which would be awesome. Except I have I have access to the account. But I tell you what, <laughs> send the message to the pra- patrons at patreoncom misery. Send the message to them. I will not look at it this week. Scouts honor, or whatever. Yes, actually, uh, this... I will look at it this week, and then we'll we. Uh, I, I promise not to look at it. Hands off completely. <laughs> Just let the patrons know, and uh, we'll we'll call that the the preview. Yeah, and, and patrons. You got to tell the patrons. Don't tell me. Right, exactly, and th- that that makes a good point, Crunchy. Uh, our patrons, we tried to give them extra stuff: uh, the pre-show, the post-show, whatever little tidbits we can find. Um, you know, give away secret guests uh, that Amos doesn't know about, things like that. Uh, you can you can join that elite group by going to Patreon.com/slash Ritual Misery. Uh, check us out there. Give a buck. Uh, what is it, Amos? Give a buck. Give a fuck. Or give a fuck, give a buck. Give I don't a know. Fuck, give a fuck. <laughs> and if you don't give a shit, at least give us a shout. I don't know. Something like something that. Something like somebody, that. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. Somebody should write that. Make that. Make that a thing. Shit. <laughs> um, right, man, uh, get us the hell out of here, man. Yeah. So uh, if you're a beer guy like me, you can find me on Untapped as well. I'm also Del Noche on there. Uh, we want to thank Chat Realm. We want to ch- thank our wonderful guest Rob Elmer, aka Captain Fubar. Um. We also want to thank Kevin McLeod at Incomptech.com for the awesome intro and outro music. Um, thank you, everyone, for me, for you, for Rob. This has been your Ritual Misery podcast. Uh, my computer sounds come through my mic, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it did right there at the end. Uh, oh, I forgot the First Diamond Club stinger. First nine seconds of your Patreon intro. <laughs> I forgot the Diamond Club stinger. So, uh, Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> right, yeah.